Hi everyone, my name is Francesca and I welcome you to my kitchen. Usually I'm on the other side of the camera filming Kitchen on the Cliff. One of the reasons I'm filming this video is because Kitchen on the Cliff recently had a flood and the damages are such that we haven't been able to film as much as we usually do. My grandparents have actually been in a hotel for the past three months. We posted a short of my grandma flipping an egg. And our goal for the new year is to reach 100,000. So, can you help us do it? That video was posted and created in the hotel. Things will be back to normal very soon. In the meantime, I thought why not recreate a popular video and answer some questions along the way. As you can see by the title of this video, we're gonna be making thick hot chocolate. So for those of you who have her book, this recipe is on page 151. Now when we created this video, this book was not out yet. This was a project and a collaboration between Nona and I that I will cherish forever. I got to take the cover of this book and I also got to take some of the photos on the inside. So it's a really lovely collaboration. Let's open to 151. So I'm gonna watch the video and follow along as you might if you were watching the video at home and trying to recreate the recipe. Buongiorno e benvenuti. My name is Giovanna and I invite you to my kitchen on the cliff. Cheers. Today, we're going to make a delicious comfort food, and that is chocolate, hot chocolate. Italian hot chocolate is different from American hot chocolate. Both are good, but the Italian version is the ultimate comfort food. If anybody has been to Torino in Northern Italy, you know what Italian chocolate is like. It's a bowl full of heaven. It is thick and soft and sweet and hot and absolutely delicious. Italian hot chocolate is a perfect drink for a winter day. It warms the cockles of your heart. It warms the cockles of your heart. So we have milk. In this case, we're using oat milk. We have cornstarch, sugar, cocoa powder, and chocolate. Okay, so I have all of my ingredients here. I have my sugar, my cornstarch, my cocoa powder, my milk, and my chocolate. We had a lot of questions about these three ingredients. The reason that we're using oat milk is solely because Nona knew that I would want to have some after the video. So she made it using oat milk because that's what I drink. You can make this recipe using any type of milk that you like. You can use cow's milk, soy milk, almond milk, oat milk, Coconut milk, I actually think coconut milk would be really great with this. We had a lot of questions about what type of chocolate to use. These are the chocolate chips that I have in my pantry. These chocolate chips are a mystery. If I were to guess, I'd say they're probably enjoy life chocolate chips, but there are also some bigger chocolate chips in here. So it's probably a mix of a few different bags. And this is the beauty of having someone else create this recipe. When Nona and I are filming a recipe, generally we'll go out to buy ingredients. You don't need to go out and buy special chocolate for this recipe. In terms of the type of chocolate, I prefer dark chocolate, but if you prefer milk chocolate, that's perfectly fine. You can feel free to use any type of chocolate you prefer. We had some questions about what kind of cocoa powder. This is the type I'm using. I'm using it because it was in my pantry. I'm a big proponent of using what you have already. Using different types of cocoa powder really doesn't make too much of a difference in this recipe. Whatever type of cocoa powder you have on hand, feel free to use it. Those are our ingredients. Let's keep watching. This is a marvelous tool. It's a, a chocolate chopper and it's, it's just wonderful. Most kitchens don't have one, but I, I love it. You definitely don't need a chocolate chopper. Um, she uses this because she finds it fun and she likes all her little tools and gadgets. But um, if you're using a chocolate bar, you can just break it up into small pieces or cut it with a knife. Definitely not a necessary tool, but a fun tool nonetheless. This is a very useful tool. However, you can use a knife very, very easily to chop the chocolate. So either way, 
If you use a bar of chocolate, chop it. If you use chocolate chips, measure them. I'm going to start by making a slurry. We add some milk to the cornstarch to make a slurry. So now we're gonna make our slurry. This is my measuring cup. It is two cups exactly, and we need two and a half cups. So what I'll do is I'll measure out two cups, and then I'll just pour it in here so it's ready to go. And with the remaining half a cup, I'll make the slurry. So we need one tablespoon of cornstarch. The role of cornstarch in this recipe is to thicken the hot chocolate. You can add more or less to achieve your desired thickness. Couldn't find a regular sized whisk, so I'm using one of these baby ones, which is what she's using in this video. Okay, and let's see what we do next. A slurry is a mixture of water or milk and flour or cornstarch, and it's used to thicken things. You can thicken a gravy, you can thicken a soup, you can thicken your Italian chocolate. Make sure that your slurry is very well mixed because you don't want any lumps in this. All right, the next thing we're going to add is the sugar. So now we'll add the sugar. We want two tablespoons of sugar, which of course you can adjust. Next is a pinch of salt, just a pinch. We'll add a pinch of salt. Salt is a flavor enhancer and we use it in savory dishes as well as sweet dishes because it enhances the flavor. And so, although this is going to be sweet, uh, the salt will be very good in it. Now, we're going to pour the slurry into the cocoa powder. Okay, so now we'll measure out our cocoa powder. The majority of this recipe is to taste. If you find that you want it to be more chocolatey, then add more. If you find it's a little bit too much, add less. Two, three. And after you've made a big mess, you can start whisking again. The devil is in the details. Devil is in the details. So you spent an extra minute mixing this very well so there are no lumps, and you'll get a very, very smooth chocolate. Remember that this is a drink. This is not something that will be baked. And so you want the drink to be smooth throughout. <laughs> when we were filming this video, we were both laughing about how tiny that little cup was that she was mixing in. That was because of the filming process. She chose a cup that she thought was pretty, but it wasn't exactly big enough. So, you know, I think I need a bigger whisk. She managed with her tiny whisk though. So maybe I will too. Some other questions we had in the comments were about variations. Specifically, someone asked, do you ever stir in a spoon of instant coffee? I think that would be delicious, and I'm actually gonna try it today, so we'll see how it affects the, the drink. I think that if we stir in a little bit of instant coffee, it's going to simply enhance the chocolate flavor, so I think that would be a really welcome addition to this. If you wanted it to be more mocha-like, you definitely need more coffee than just a little bit of instant espresso. Instant espresso is found in a lot of chocolate baking recipes because it enhances the chocolate flavor, but it doesn't leave that coffee taste. So if your goal is to have a coffee taste, then you'd probably need uh, more of a coffee base. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna add a little bit of instant espresso, probably about a teaspoon. This is like a third of a tablespoon, which is a teaspoon. Someone else also asked, can you add orange or vanilla? Yeah, you can add any type of flavoring that you'd like. Vanilla would be a beautiful pairing with this and so would orange. I love eating oranges with chocolate, so I'm sure that would be delicious. I think any flavoring that you would naturally find in a chocolate bar, like caramel chocolate or raspberry chocolate would probably work well in the drink itself. All right, now let's measure our chocolate chips. We'll add about three to four ounces. Okay, let's head over to the stove. With the heat off, pour the milk into the pot. Not all of it. Add the slurry. We're going to add the rest of the milk. All right, let's add our slurry. Let me mix it up one more time. Now, the reason that she asked you to reserve some milk is so that you can get all of this out of the cup. She doesn't like to waste anything, so we're not gonna waste anything, but I didn't reserve any milk, so I'll just scrape it out with a spatula. We'll put this on about medium. We don't wanna burn anything, so that's why we wanna keep on whisking. So what we're doing right now is we're heating up the milk and the cornstarch mixture. And in order for the cornstarch to be activated, we actually need the, the milk to come to a simmer or a little boil. 
And once that happens, it will thicken up really quickly, but it might take a little bit of time for it to get to a simmer, so just be patient. A few moments later. It's starting to come to a boil, and I'm gonna start to feel resistance on my whisk as it thickens up more and more. There we go, it's coming to a simmer. So we're gonna whisk a little bit here and wait for it to get really thick, and then we're gonna pour our chocolate in. All right, that's beautiful. Now we're gonna add our chocolate. And all we want the chocolate to do is melt. So I turn the heat off and I'm just melting the chocolate in the residual heat. Now I did get a few comments asking why it sometimes forms a skin. Now this recipe is kind of like on the route to becoming pudding. <laughs> so puddings are well known to form skins. And the way that I've found to avoid that is to keep stirring it periodically as it cools down. So right now I'm not gonna serve it because it's nearly boiling. And as it starts to cool, I'm gonna keep on stirring it just to break up any of the parts that would become a skin if I didn't. So now we're done. Let's go get Nona so she can taste it. Actually. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Guess you like really whipped cream because that cab is empty. Do you want the one with more whipped cream? <laughs> so I made this recipe using the video, but I added a spoonful of instant espresso because a commenter had mentioned that that would be good and I thought that sounded really good, so I decided to do that. I think it will just Probably. enhance the chocolate yeah, flavor, yeah. so. Shall we try? Yeah, let's try let's it. Let's give it a try. Mmm. Luscious. I don't taste the coffee, but I think you're right that it makes the chocolate even stronger and more full-bodied. Well, it was snowing this morning, but now we have the sun out. So having a cup of hot chocolate is just the right thing. And looking at the sun. Someone asked why does theirs develop a skin? And I said earlier that if you stir it as it cools, it'll break up whatever might become a skin if it stands still for too long as it's cooling. Because this recipe is kind of on the way to becoming a pudding. And puddings so have, have skin. skin. Unless, of course, what you can do to not uh, let the skin uh, form is to take a piece of plastic uh, wrap and put it on the surface, not just on the container, but on the surface. When I was little, I loved the skin. I used to love it, you know, and the chocolate. I would pick it out. You know, it's <laughs> funny. I was researching this a little it's bit, good. and a lot of people love I the remember. skin. I, I love the skin. Yeah. I, I look forward to that. In fact, uh, I love the skin. You know, we got hot milk for breakfast or whenever. My mother was so terrified of getting pneumonia and she associated cold with pneumonia. Uh, she would heat the milk mm -hmm. uh, because sometimes it was unpasteurized and so she would um, she would heat it. And, and when you let it cool, it formed the skin and that was right. my favorite thing. <laughs> I would pick out the skin, I just loved it. That's so funny. All right, where can you get this when you're in Italy? This is what you get in Torino. They specialize in chocolate, so you want to have it there. You can have it in Rome, too. Arrivederci, and do not forget to subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> and I thank you for subscribing. If you liked this format of video and you'd like to see more, please let us know in the comments. I love the comments. I, I read them all. You're very kind with, with your comments, and they lift my spirit most times. Ciao. Ciao. Alla ciao. prossima volta. Alla prossima volta. Ciao. Ciao, ciao. ciao.